the pastor did it first. I'm not talking bad about him, but the pastor did it first to save his life. And then his wife did it. But she said she barely spit only a little bit, just so enough to leave, but enough to where Jesus wouldn't get mad at her. I don't know. I wouldn't deny him, but go ahead. All right. And then one more person, and they spat on it, and they left. Right? But the last person, the fourth person, the girl, it says that she went down on her knees, and this is documented. She went down on her knees, grabbed the Bible, brushed off all the spit, and said, Father, why have they done this to you? 16-year-old girl had more courage than 30-year-old people. Some of y'all are 16 in here. Well, um, needless to say, the Pakistan soldiers, cops, whatever, held a gun to her head and said, if you don't take that back, we're going to shoot you. She said, <laughs> this really got me. She said, the Bible says, he, so ever, he who loses his life gains life. And they shot her. Her life was over. Now, the reason I told y'all that, I'm not trying to down y'all, but I have an intention behind it. How many of y'all would be a martyr? A martyr is somebody that would sacrifice themselves for Jesus. I want y'all to raise y'all's hands really quick. How many of y'all would have done the same thing? Dang, some of y'all don't got y'all's hands up. <clears throat> Dang. You better get a little loose. Come on. This isn't, this isn't this church. Come on. We can chill. Come on, guys. Well, um, I told y'all that. To tell y'all this, a lot of y'all say y'all would do it, but a lot of y'all don't know how to. That's how I'm going to explain this crazy stick. Okay. Now, I want y'all to open y'all's Bibles to Exodus chapter 4. If you can put it on the screens for me. And while y'all are doing that, I'll, um, I'll give y'all a quick history on Exodus chapter 3. Moses and the burning bush. So what God did was he, he, took, he took Moses up to a higher place to talk to him, tell him what he wants him to do, tell him there's, a, there's, all these, there's all these people in Egypt that are slaves, and I want you to go save them. Moses wasn't having it. You won't find that in your Bible. You might find it in the Hebrew. <laughs> Man, y'all. I'm really, I'm really tired, guys. Okay. Well, um, well, the whole time, that whole chapter is about him arguing with God. You can read it, highlight it, take it home. It's the Bible. You might read it one day. Okay, so um, he's arguing with God, right? Finally, someone relax, man. What's going on here? Okay, so um, <laughs> so chapter three, the whole time he's arguing with God, saying, not arguing, that's a bad word to use, but saying, God, I'm not worthy enough. I stutter. God, I'm 15. God, I don't have my own house. I'm not good enough. People think I'm too young. Sound like some of y'all. Okay, fine. That's all right. I know I, I, say, I sounded like that at once. All right. So um, anyways, Exodus chapter 4, verse 1. This is the conversation with God, Lord. Moses answered, what if they do not believe me or listen to me and say, the Lord did not appear to you? He was so worried about what people were going to say about him instead of letting God be God. Too many of us are worried about what people are going to say about us. And we don't let God be God. Too many of us. How many of y'all are tired of seeing y'all's generation die? How many of y'all are tired of seeing y'all's good friends in school with babies the next day? I mean, it ain't an overnight thing. She was doing something wrong. How many of y'all are tired? Tired enough to do something? We'll end it like that. All right. So um, he said... Uh, what if they do not believe me or listen to me and say, the Lord did not appear to you? Then the Lord said to him, what is that in your hand? Moses said, a staff. What is that in your hand? Moses replied, a staff. The Lord said, throw it on the ground. Moses threw it on the ground. All right, that got, that got me a little curious. So the casual Bible reader, he would have just gone over that. He would have just been like, oh, okay. God was talking to Moses. A stick, threw it on the ground. No, I got really curious. Why is it that God asked him about a stick when he was telling him to go somewhere? Why? So I did a little bit of, a little bit of studying, and i got to give credit to somebody, awesome man of God, Bill Wilson. He taught me some things. And, um, and, and there's, a, there's an open email chat with the University of Jerusalem, and I was, um, I was emailing this rabbi. No joke. You're looking at me like I'm lying. It's all right. I'll show you him. <laughs> so um, 
So I, I was emailing this guy, because Bill Wilson's awesome, man. If you get curious, look him up. So um, I was emailing this rabbi, asking him the history about it. Do you know that um, when you're a kid in the Old Testament, what they would do is they would make a staff for you, depending on how tall your parents and your family were. They would make a staff like the right size, and you wouldn't get it till you were of age. And um, there was this chemical created called creosote. They use it on railroad ties nowadays. It was developed in the Old Testament. You ain't seen that. You're looking at me. <laughs> so, um, <laughs> okay, okay. So, um, anyways, they give it to you when you were a kid. It'd be with you your whole life. Well, here's the thing. Every time you would go through something, any time, like, do any of y'all have journals? Do y'all have journals? Okay, that was the 90s, but. Okay, so um, they didn't have journals. They didn't have paper at the time. Some of y'all think I'm lying about all this, but look it up, trust me. So um, they didn't have paper at the time. So what they had was papyrus, and the Pharisees and the Sadducees and the scribes carried them. They're, they're these big things. If you watch the Jesus movies and all those Old Testament movies, they'll show you, right? So um, these big scrolls of papyrus, people couldn't write their lives on those because you're going to travel through Egypt carrying papyrus? That, that looked retarded. You can say retarded from the pulpit. It's okay. Guys, loosen up a little bit. Okay, so um, instead of having that, the way to keep a journal, and, and I mean, it was amongst other things. Every time something of significance would happen to them, they would make a marking. But the thing is that it wasn't in their language. It wasn't a lettering that anybody could do. It wasn't any type of letter, lettering, language, sign, language, anything. It was, it was like almost like a symbol. It was a symbol, but only they knew it. Only they knew what it meant and what it did, right? So um, if you went through something, you'd write it down. You'd make a little marking, and then you would remember that, right? All right, you all need to loosen up a little bit, do a lap. Come on, guys, what's going on? <laughs> okay, okay, so, um, so, so basically what staffs were is a journal of your life, right? No, wrong, okay. Somebody's awake. All right, all right. So it was a journal of your life. You'd keep it your whole life, and you'd keep making markings. Anything of significance, anything you go through, you'd make a marking of it, right? I'm going to read this again. If this is your life, because it tells the whole story of your life to yourself, what does this mean? Okay, let's go back to this. God's arguing with Moses, chapter 3. Moses, chapter 4, uh, verse 1. Moses answered, what if they do not believe me or listen to me and say, the Lord did not appear to you. Then the Lord said to him, what is that in your hand? Does some of y'all get it now? Okay. So what is that in your hand? Moses said, a staff. The Lord said, throw it on the ground. Okay. Put two and two together. Come on. Y'all are kind of like not here, so I got to sign language. Okay, okay. So this is your life, right? You're, Moses is holding on to it. Doesn't want to do it. God says, throw it to the ground. Right? What do you think God was telling him? What? Lay your life down. Throw away your life. Give up your life. Moses was holding on to his life. Read chapter 3. He was questioning God. If God came to you and started literally talking to you like, Son. Would you, would you be like, no, I'm not going to do that, God? Nah, no. I know a lot of y'all would bust on y'all's knees and get ready to go and save some Israelites. Right? Okay. So, back to the story. Moses, God, what is that in your hand? Moses said, a staff. The Lord said, throw it on the ground. Moses threw it on the ground, and it became a snake. And he ran from it. So I'm Moses running from it. So why is it that the life that God said that he was holding on to so tightly, threw it on the ground, and it became a snake? That got me curious, too. Man, don't you love the Bible? That got me too curious. Why is it that Moses' staff, which was a journal of his life, became a snake? A lot of you are afraid to go and save people or to go and talk to your friends because you're afraid of what those friends might say about you. They might say, why are you preaching to me? We used to run the streets together, didn't we? Or they might say, who are you? I remember when you were sleeping with this girl. I remember when you were smoking weed, or I remember when you were drinking. Who are you to preach to me? I'm happy I got somebody that got that. So Moses threw his life on the ground. It became a snake. He ran from it, okay? He ran from it, like a lot of us have. 
and do still. Then the Lord said to him, reach out your hand and take it by the tail. Not by the head, by the tail. Now this isn't documented, revelation, spiritual. I just, this is just, I don't know. I don't know. I, I was kind of like, why not the, I, I like to ask questions. Why not the head? Why not the middle? Why the tail? If I laid my life down and God, and I saw what it was, and God was reminding me where I've come from, I would want to pick it up from where God saved me at the very end, right? Because some people are afraid that if they grab it by the head, the snake might bite them. Some of y'all might forget where y'all came from. I don't know. Maybe somebody has to hear that. I don't know. God's talking to me. Is that all right? <laughs> all right, all right, all right. So Moses reached out, took hold of the snake, and it turned back into a staff in his hand. This said the Lord is that they may believe that the Lord, the God of fathers of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob has appeared to you. All right. Now I want to skip over to y'all really quick because some of y'all didn't get that. I want to skip over to y'all and show y'all a little bit more. In um, 1 Samuel chapter 17, verse 40. Okay, so I'll tell you a quick run through of chapter 17, 1 Samuel. It was um, David and Goliath. A lot of y'all know the story. David was a little sheep boy out there with his shepherd's staff. He wrote a lot of psalms. He had a, a, a crazy cool relationship with God like a lot of us do, like a lot of us want to. And um, his dad wanted him to run down to, um, I guess they were having a war at the time. He had older brothers. His older brothers were in the war, but they weren't fighting at the time. There was a man, Goliath, who's huge. Brother Mike, stand up really quick. It's like me fighting Brother Mike this big. That's, that's my mental picture. Or Bubba fighting Brother Mike. Okay, so um, so I just imagine this huge, uh, man, you know, because like an army's not going to fight them. Goliath, he's got to be big. Come on. Like, let, the, let the Bible be real in your head. So um, he said, his dad told David, run down and, and, and give your brothers food, I think it was, bread, water, something like that, something of significance to eat. And he said, um... He said, find out the word on your brothers. So David went, obeyed his dad, was going. But while he was going, he heard the giant Philistine, Goliath, yelling, oh, come fight me. Oh, oh. I'll just do, ah, oh, more, right? He said, basically what he said was that um, if, if one of, he said, instead of fighting like the whole war, this is to sum it up what happened, instead of fighting the armies against each other, Goliath would fight one of their soldiers. And whoever won, would be conquered, right? So all the all the all the um, all of the, the army was scared, both sides, except for Goliath's side, right? So um, David, I think I looked up the history. He was kind of like this. This says between thirteen and fifteen, he was still a shepherd boy. Um, I don't know, thirteen, fifteen, cool. So um, he was still a shepherd boy. So basically, what he said was um, he said I could fight this guy. He was telling everybody this. Finally, they took him in front of King Saul who was the king at the time, and he was the commander and everything, the general, whatever. They took him to King Saul. King Saul said, like, I'll summon it up for y'all. I'll put it into nowadays. Like, who are you, kid? You're going you're gonna to fight for me? You got your shepherd's staff. What? Who are you? You're nothing but a kid. How are you going to make a difference? How are you going to make a difference? That's basically what he said. But that's to sum it up. It's not get religious. I'm not trying to change the Bible. I'm just giving you like a, you know, you know. Okay, okay. So verse 40. Okay, okay. So anyways, he said, uh, oh, wait, wait. Let me go back. I'm sorry, guys. I'm sorry. So um, he said, he was like, who are you? No, 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 no. He kept, kept talking to him. Who are you? And um, Goliath, fin I mean, David finally said, I think he looked at a staff. Now, that's not in the Bible, but if I was him, I would have. King Saul, I fought a bear once. I killed it. I fought a lion once. I killed it. Why is he better than them? Right? Okay. So, okay, okay. So he said, all right, you go ahead. You're crazy. He tried to put on his armor. He actually, gave, the king gave David his armor. It didn't fit. David said, I can't go in this. I'm going to go in my shepherd clothes. I'm going to get off here and feel my love. All right. Then he said, <laughs> verse 40, he said, um, it says, then he took his staff in hand, 
He took his staff in hand. Y'all know what the staff means now. It's the journal of your life. He took his life in his hand, but different than Moses. Took his staff in hand, chose five smooth stones from the stream, put them in the pouch of a shepherd's bag, and with his sling in his hand, approached the Philistine. Okay. You, buddy, can you come here? You look good. Yeah, come here. No, come over here. Come over here. All right, I want you to grab this. I'll give you all a little. Brother Mike, I'm sorry I got to use you, but you are the tallest brother in here. <laughs> I'm sorry, but okay. Okay, okay. So he said, I'm ready, King Saul. I'm ready. How old are you? 11? You're, you're pretty tall. We'll, we'll say he's 13, 15. All right. So um, I'm sorry, dude. I don't mean that in a bad way. All right. Okay, okay. So, so he, he has his staff in hand. He grabs his stones, grabs his sling, right? Personally, I would be really scared. I would be really scared. If y'all, if y'all are curious about how scared I would be, read how they talk about Goliath and why t an army didn't want to fight him. An army. I would be pretty scared. That's just me. Just put two and two together. I would be scared. 13 to 15, young kid. Personally, I thought he was scared. I think he was scared. But I know that he knew who was in him. And he knew who would protect him. That's why he rise to the occasion. Right? Okay. So I just imagine this guy, David, running up. While he's grabbing his staff, just looking. Oh, now I'm going to do this one. You are with me when I fought the lion. You are with me when I fought the bear. I know you'll be with me now. I know you'll be with me. That's kind of like when, I, when I, started, I started getting this message ready, I started thinking about it. How could I apply that to my life? Because I would hate to speak to people and not know what they're going through. So I said, God, I've fought a lion before. I went, I went to RC for stealing cars. I was in a gang. You could ask my dad. If you're curious, I still have my tattoos and everything. So um, I went to TYC, Grand Theft Auto. My dad's right there. Ask him if, you're, if you think I'm lying. So um, I went. And, and I wasn't saved at the time, but I heard enough God, and I knew enough God in me. And I said, man, God, man, I know I'm like David, and I know I'm little, and I know I've done so many wrong things. Man, won't you help me beat this lion? Won't you help me beat this bear? And man, I was, I may not have been the best person, but I was like, help me out. God, help me out. I was looking at two to five. I made a promise with God. I wouldn't cut my hair for a year. It's been four now. I kind of just like the look. So I said I wouldn't cut my hair. <laughs> I said I wouldn't cut my hair for a year. If you got me out of this, God, I would fast to you. I would devote something. And I love my short hair. I said I would devote something that I would sacrifice something for you. A lot of us would sacrifice our life, but we don't know, but we want to, but we're not sure. I kind of thought the same thing. Man, my hair? No. But I was like, all right, God, I'll do it. I know you'll be with me. You were with my dad. Quick history. Me and my mom and my brothers, we're from Brazil. We were dirt poor. When we came to this country, we lived in cars. And um, we actually went to Promise Land before you were there, before I was able to walk. And um, Bishop Phillips helped us out. God was with us when we had a lion to fight. We came into this country nobody. Nobody. We lived in a car. My mom was a vice girl, and we had no dad. My brothers have a, a dad, but different dads, but um, their dad was in Brazil. We had no dad. My mom didn't speak English. And um, how do you expect a lady with three kids, no, four, the daughter, my little sister, four kids in a little Honda Accord, tiny little, I don't know what, to live? And she didn't speak English from another country. That's a lot of strikes against you right there. You know she's married to the man that owns this church. I'm not trying to brag, but I'm trying to tell you that if you have a lion in front of you, and if you have a bear in front of you, and you're crying to your pastors saying, why is God doing that? No, you're talking out your backside. That's what you're doing. 
You just need to get ready. Get yourself in a position where you hear God, where you're talking to God, where God's running your life. And then let God be God. Because it's not an accident. I, I learned this in my own life, and this is to y'all. It is not an accident the life you've lived. Or you. Any of y'all. Richard, it's not an accident the life you've lived. Do y'all know that? It is not an Roy, it's not an accident the life you've lived. It's not an accident. You know why? Because somebody out there is going up against that same lion that you're going up against. Right? Or that you have gone up against. And here's the thing. I'm going to skip over really quick in the Bible. Elijah, the prophet of fire, the way he would heal people. I'm sorry, guys. Y'all can go and have a seat, dude. I'm sorry. You're in the video archives. So um, the way Elijah would heal people is he would go, take a staff. He would lay hands on people, but there, were, there was one time when all he would do is lay his staff on their head, and they would be healed. Leprosy, death, anything. They would be healed. We know that this is a life, right? So I kind of put two and two together. Your life could heal somebody. What you've been through could save somebody. What you're going through, somebody's already been through. And y'all want to know something? Pastors tend to go a lot, go through a lot. A lot of people don't think so, but they do. He's laughing. That's how, yeah. A lot of y'all need to stop going, forgive me, sorry, to your punk friends, asking them for advice. Y'all need to start going to those pastors. It's simple. Because they fought the lion before, right? Okay, Elijah, prophet of fire, healing people with his staff. All he has to do is touch it. Do you know that you could be going through something that I've gone through or that he's gone through? But some of us are like Moses, and we argue with God, and we won't let go of our lives. Right? <laughs> right? A lot of us will not let go of who we used to be and what we used to be. A lot of us think that we're not worthy. Guys, let me tell you something. None of us are worthy. Get over that. All right? But there's a reason that Jesus died. I'll give you a little bit of history. I know I like history, guys. So that, okay. So um, so in the Old Testament, what they would do is when they, when a family would sin, a man would sin, woman, anything. When a person, a human, would sin after Adam and Eve, what you had to do was you had to get a lamb, perfect in every way, because lambs can't think bad, like a lamb, you know, the little sheep. Bad. Yeah. You had to get one of them, and um. They were perfect in every way. Their blood was perfect. It was enough to cover up yours, and they would take it up to a higher place and sacrifice it to wash over their, their, um, their sins, right, their transgressions, who they were. Well, Jesus, God, knew this was hard. Like, we're losing animals. They were angels. I don't know. I'm not going to say that. But um, so <laughs> I love how one person laughed. Make me feel good. Uh, okay, okay, so um, at least some, my jokes aren't corny to everybody. So um, God knew this. God, God's a G. You know, just round applause for God right now. Man, without him, we, uh, this, none of this would happen. So um, he knew. He knew. So he sent his son like a lamb, perfect in every way. His blood was sufficient, right? A lot of people don't understand why Jesus dying washed over you. Well, understand tonight. Listen to me. So in the Old Testament, what they would do, a lamb, perfect in every way, sacrifice it. It's pure blood because it couldn't think bad, couldn't do bad, and wouldn't do bad, wouldn't sin, would wash over them, right? So God sent somebody in human form, Jesus. Same thing as a lamb. Couldn't sin didn't sin, wouldn't compromise, was sheep, was perfect in every way, what we strive to be, so he got sacrificed, 
on the cross. His blood was poured over an altar like they used to do in the Old Testament, right? For us. Good one. Good one. I thought somebody was going to say something, but not that warm yet. Still chiseling. Still kind of frozen. All right. So, um, what... I get goosebumps talking about the Holy Spirit's like brushing up against you. Perfect in every way. I mean, I don't know about you. (laughs) I don't know about you. But I say I would sacrifice myself for you. But when it comes down to it, and I'm being frank with y'all, I don't know if I'd have the guts to do it, to be tortured. I don't know if I have the guts, guys. I'm being honest. A lot of you say, yeah, yeah, totally. I'd die for you. Prove it. Die. When that situation comes, let's go to a third world country. (laughs) Not literally. Don't go die, guys. Don't say, don't go to heaven and God be like, why? PJ told me. No. (laughs) No, I I don't want to see. I don't want that on my hands. But um, I know myself pretty well. And I know... That the PJ Suarez that I know and that I've known for all my life, all my staff, (laughs) would kind of question it. Jesus did it. And I'm not sure if it's 36 lashes or 39 lashes, which one did he take? 36. Okay, okay. So look, I was kind of studying more. He took 36 lashes. 39? I said 39, man. Okay, so he took 39 lashes, right? Do you know that in that scripture, he said um, he took his lash, he took our sickness in his beatings. It says something to that degree. Well, um, that was literal. If you go on any type of website, if you're curious about what I'm saying and you think I'm out there, you can look it up. But um, there's 39 documented diseases documented wow (laughs) exactly what I said when I got I was like man I'm all over this dang so perfect every way gave up his life for us but we won't give up anything I didn't want to say it but (laughs) I don't know some of us all I know is that I'm, I'm ready to drop it. I am ready to drop it. I am ready to drop my life and what I've been through for him. It's only fair. It's not even fair. He went through way more than I go through. Oh, my mom, she doesn't love me. Oh, you got a cool pastor, she'll love you. Man, I was abused when I was a kid. I've been in the gang. I'm not good enough. My life's a snake. Everything I've been through, nobody accepted me. Nobody wanted me. I was, I was raped when I was a kid. Everything. I'm, no, I wasn't, but I'm just saying. Okay. But um, so a lot of us are afraid. I, I'd say that's what it is. A lot of us are afraid. How long was I afraid? So don't feel bad, because I held on to this longer than chapter three, way longer than chapter three. But as soon as I let go of it, the people I could talk to, see, because when people see me walk up to them with my long hair and my tattoos, and I'm not publicizing tattoos, guys. If you're curious about that, ask me later. Right, Dad? Okay. The way I look and what I've been through, when I go up to people, gone up to some people, some crazy looking people, people that, I don't know, you know, don't normally see in church and say, oh, that's a good people, and if you could come right over here, you can eat a board of demons, I mean deacons, so, um, guys, I, I love church, I'm not talking bad about it, don't take it wrong, I just like to have good friends, and the Holy Ghost, right, okay, so, um, so I love going up to those type of people. Look at these two guys back here. Robbie, stand up. Rashad, stand up. You see these boys? Look, I want y'all to look that way. Most people would see them 
and think they're gangbangers. If a white lady saw them, think they're going to rob them. It's okay. I'm good friends with them. Don't worry. Right? Most people would see them and think they're trash. You know, these boys serve the Lord like there's no tomorrow. They go to Agape. They're actually, they're actually um, Bishop's armor bearer. No, 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 no. Sanctuary servants. He stands up. Suited up and everything. These boys get down when it comes to God. Like, their lives. No, 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 seriously. Like, when I first started becoming a Christian, and I saw these guys and how they lived. I lived with them after I got out of jail for, like, I don't know, a few months. I was like, man, I just want to break. I just want to be with God for two months. Like, I'm, they lay their lives down. At the time, that's what I said. Not now. Come on. Don't hold it to me. But, um. I love talking to those type of people. I'm just going back to them. You can sit down. Sorry, guys. I love talking to those type of people. You know why? Because I've been through what they're going through, or I've been through what they will go through. A lot of y'all have done the same. And why do I keep saying that? I'm getting on some of y'all's nerves because I see it on y'all's faces. Why do I keep saying that? Because I can't stress enough the importance of letting your life because as soon as you let this down, as soon as you let this down, the people you protect are you, right? So if I've been through all this, am I better than you? No, not at all, not in any way. What I do, you could do. What I do, you could do. All of you could do this. It doesn't take a genius to say, Lord, I love you. It's easy. Lord, I love you. Forgive me. I want to live my life for you. Nobody else. Because I remember how it felt back in the day. Seeing my mom come in like that. Or my dad. And I remember what it felt like when I lived in cars. And I remember what it felt like when people used to gang up on me. And even though bad things still happen today, I know where I'm going. So it doesn't matter. And I know what I'm here for. It doesn't matter. Okay. Some of y'all say, well, then why does God let us go through stuff? Why does God let people be raped? And why does God? It's not a God thing. It's a man thing. It's a choice that people make. People choose to do bad things. But. But here's the thing. Imagine how Jesus felt perfect in every way. It said when he was on the cross, he could have commanded hundreds of thousands of angels to come and save him. Perfect in every way, but he lived his whole life knowing that he was going to die for you, tortured a terrible death. He knew that. And a lot of us complain that we're going through something. I don't know. Guys, I used to, be, I used to do the same thing. And I'm preaching to myself right now. I'm not, not only speaking to y'all. I am speaking to myself. The Holy Ghost is speaking through me. And he's talking to PJ's mind. And I'm realizing, man, that person that's going to walk next to me when I'm on the bus might go to hell. And I'm not going to say, you're going to hell. No, I don't want to do that. But what I have in me could save them. Of y'all's friends, what y'all have in y'all could save them. They're too afraid 